No assessment of American-Israeli relations can ignore the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, AIPAC for short. AIPAC is America's largest pro-Israel lobby. Surveys of Capitol Hill insiders conducted by Fortune and National Journal ranked it as one of the three most powerful lobbying groups in Washington. AIPAC seeks to ensure US foreign policy is pro-Israel. The question is whether AIPAC makes a difference or whether this policy approach would be happening anyway. Many American politicians are overtly pro-Israel. Former Michigan governor and Democrat Jennifer Granholm is a typical example, claiming Israel can be a role model for other nations, including America, showing how citizens are cared for. She also described Israel as a progressive paradise. Others have reflected similar views, including the president himself. It's hardly surprising then that AIPAC has praised President Trump over his decision to recognize Jerusalem al-Quds as the Israeli regime's capital. The powerful lobby group launched its annual conference at the Washington Convention Center with an appeal to progressives. However, the move has angered Palestinians and increased tensions in the region. Why does Israel have so much political influence in Washington, whose British embassy is here in central London? And is this why America seems to ignore the Israeli regime's violent treatment of Palestinians? Simple questions with important answers. We went to America and asked, as a citizen, are you comfortable with a foreign power having such huge influence on US policy? Here's what they told us. Well, it, that makes me feel kind of like uncomfortable. Because um, I think us as our, like, our states, we should be making like our own decisions and stuff like that, not having people influence us on choices. Because it could be like, I can tell someone like, hey, like jump off that cliff, you know, like I'm having power over their life, telling them to do something and that shouldn't be like that. Well, I would say that probably reasonably there's going to be a little bit of influence on US policy, but Probably not a huge amount. Um, I would say just keep it in reasonable limits. No, I do not. I, I think as workers here in the U.S. that we should make, as American citizens, should make our own influential decisions over what we do and say here as a whole, as a U.S. group. Uh, not having any anybody from foreign anything, except for Israel, make any type of, of uh, say in what we do. Foreign power, yes, I actually am because I like the influence of the foreign nations, their 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 way of living here because it it does inf influence how we enjoy life here. In fact, I'm a Canadian citizen, not a U.S. citizen, but um, I think that the foreign powers that have the influence actually it spreads further than the U.S. And so when the U.S. being the most powerful country in the world, that Everything decision that happens here affects every country, especially its neighbors. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Uh, because the foreign should stay foreign. You know, we're not foreign, so we're here. That's how it should be. Israel is important because uh, it's an effective stop against terrorism. Um, and what the Israelis have done and achieved in stopping terrorism is something that no other country has been able to achieve. I mean, when it comes to foreign policy, it kind of has to because, you know, like we can't just be we can't just be dictating, you know, our decisions based on what we want. You know, we have to we have to take other countries into consideration and, you know, we have to like work with each other to be able to, you know, come to compromises and be able to be to live with each other. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I think um, I think it's kind of weird that they have so much influence and control over um, what's going on over here because it's clearly they have their hands in our president's pockets somehow. Um, so I think that does actually bother me a lot. So I will say, yeah, um, it does bother me. <laughs> APAC influence in America is total. It practically defines American foreign policy. Why? This is a, a big question, but the one thing that I can tell you in such a short interview is that APAC attitude is totally 
consistent with the message of the book of Esther. It is consistent with Jewish culture, the idea that Jews have to work hard and to manage to get into corridors of powers uh, within their uh, host nations. APAC has the potential, well first of all it's one of the probably the most influential effective lobby group within the US. It has the potential to undermine US democracy uh, and worst of all it has the potential to um, undermine the national interest and threaten the uh, interest of the country as a whole. Uh, if we take one example, uh, the Iraq war in 2003, one of the reasons the US went in well, one of the f failures was false intelligence. And if you look at the historical records, the false intelligence provided to the Americans was uh, sold by APEC. Uh, so this war has been counterproductive. It has threatened America, it has uh, undermined its own interest and made the world sa uh, more unsafe. So uh, it has the potential to um, uh, go against democracy and threaten national interest. Why have Israel and America become so important to each other? Here's the view of the public in America. Well, I think that um, they're in a critical area and also they kind of share some values with the U.S. and so I think that's why the U.S. connects with Israel so much. Like what values? Um, well, uh, I would say that America has uh, Judeo-Christian roots and Israel is also um, has that same, those same values. So. Because of the fact of the way that we believe, um, we're we're a Christian country nation. Um, I, I believe that because of their beliefs and, and vice versa, our beliefs, we should support each other. And and if you look at history or the Bible, everything that has said has is coming true in that part, which shows the the power of our Christ, our coming back. As a Canadian citizen. Um, I think relationships with Israel are important to maintain that peace and agreeability with all different parts of the world are at the top. Oh, because Israel is where God, you know what I'm saying, like the nations of God and stuff came from. And God is important for everybody. So, you know, Israel is a sacred land. You know, that's the land of God, the sacred land. So you, we got to keep we got to keep it good with the sacred land. You know, watch out for God's people because that's the chosen land. Um, Israel is important to the United States because of the um, historical sites, the historical, the history, um, of course, tracing back to Christianity. And so that's why they're important to the United States, because they definitely have a blend into our culture. And the United States is very important to Israel because we provide protection and different resources to, to them in their area, such as water, food, and different supplies that they can't produce themselves. I don't agree with the statement. Um, the reason being... Um, U.S. has been able to formulate its own policy, uh, which is in its own interest. Honestly, I, I, I really believe it goes down to, you know, because, just because of the land that it's on. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, don't, I don't see any other reason besides the fact that it's like the Holy Land and, you know, that's where, you know, Jesus walked and stuff and we're just trying to protect that. But then again, Israelis has been a U.S. ally since, like, since forever, so that too yes in a way based on our actions um based on how we're moving and how we're interacting with them and it kind of shows that we're we have something going on or you know they have some kind of control over us so i think that america is now an israeli colony it operates as an israeli colony it sends its soldiers to fight zionist wars, usually global conflicts, um, America subscribes to Israeli needs and um, I actually don't think that America needs Israel at all, but apparently the political uh, elite in America is uh, treacherous on this uh, on these issues and it will take some time for that to change. Israel actually is not as important to the US as the US is to Israel, less so now. Uh, because if you, th if you think about it, Israel is actually a strategic liability to, to the US. 
uh, not an interest. Uh, it's also a moral pariah. It goes against many of the uh, foundational values of America, like uh, democracy, um, uh, um, uh, not to occupy another person's land, freedom of expression, all those things, not to ethically cleanse the lands of other people. Um, but having said that, Israel still gains the support of the US, and that partly or mainly is due to the Israeli lobby. There isn't anything uh, which, which the Israelis do which none of the other Arab countries cannot offer at the moment. But for some reason, Israel still maintains the support and loyalty of the uh, US because of its uh, uh, powerful lobbies in America. Based on the apparent high level of influence that AIPAC has, some argue the US is a hostage to Israel. Does the public in America agree and why? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I think that a country is always going to uh, go along with what they agree with. So I think it's just kind of that their values align again. You, you know, I, I would like to hope that we would work in the best interest for each other, being that we have the same beliefs. Um, so that, that's probably all I can say about that situation. I don't think it's a, we're a hostage, because I don't think that the U.S. can be hostage to anybody for, say, um, but at the same time, as important as they are to us, I think that we definitely want to keep them on our side. So we do it for our own interest? Yes. I don't think that it's a hostage because, you know, I feel like, like we, we do our own thing, you know. I feel like we would have more power over them, but uh, no, I don't feel that we're a hostage. No. Okay. Not at all. Um, and why? Um, I disagree with that because, of course, we have to have inter. inter um, continental cooperation so I believe that there has to be a mixing of different opinions I don't believe that we're being a hostage over them I say we're a strong influence and they're a strong influence on us I think there has to be a happy middle ground um, I, I think it is a bit of a double standard that uh, we talk about Iran not uh, ending its missile program where every other country in the world is got its own um, issues about getting into the missile program taking instance North Korea. There's nothing that the U.S. or the other countries have been able to do to stop North Korea from pursuing its missile programs. I don't agree. I don't agree that it's a hostage to Israel. I believe that, you know, they're friends and they're helping each other out. Well, it's kind of one-sided, but yeah. Um, I feel like if they don't have any concrete evidence or any kind of proof, they shouldn't just be throwing out, you know, accusations or anything of that. They sh until they know for sure, you know, what is it, then I think they should be slandering them. I, I just uh, basically answered uh, this uh, question. America is uh, definitely an hostage in this uh, story. It has been hijacked. Um, and um, this is a very tragic situation for both Americans and Israelis, uh, because the Israelis are in a state of hubris which is very dangerous um, and the um, Americans are fighting uh, Israeli wars and they cannot even win these Israeli wars so it is a devastating situation. Yeah, at times it can feel that the US is a hostage to the, to the Israeli lobby, um, but it's not always the case. I mean, one good example is the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, when you have a president who understands the uh, long-term strategic goals of America and understands that security is um, security is provided by having a nuclear deal. Um, you can actually undermine the lobby. The lobby, Israeli lobby, wanted to uh, break the nuclear deal. It was against the nuclear deal. Uh, but when you have a president with foresight and it really is a major strategic interest, I think the U.S. Uh, US presidents have the potential to bypass. Uh, the lobby and the lobby isn't as effective. Public opinion in America is curiously divided on religious lines in perhaps an unexpected way. 31% of white evangelicals think the US is giving the right level of support to Israel, while 46% want the US to support Israel more. For comparison, 54% of American Jews think the U.S. supports Israel the right amount, while 31% say it doesn't go far enough. Why, in the American public's view, 
does pledging allegiance to Israel seem to have to involve slandering Iran and mentioning missile programs? Well, I don't know. I would say that um, in that area, probably, Israel is one of their best allies. So I feel like they, they feel like they need to, um, you know, be be with Israel and maybe they feel like they need to be against the countries in that area um, to kind of strengthen their allegiance with Israel? Well, because of the misguided children. You know, the Iran's is not, you know, they're everything, they're trying to take over Israel and we don't, we shouldn't allow, correct, am I correct on that? Trying to hurt Israel. And we don't want that to happen as a, as a country. It's in our best interest to support Israel to the bitter end. Why is that in your opinion? Oh, I don't know. I think it's the same, this weird Jew, Did like, have to do with Arab Asian? Middle, yeah, it's like the Middle East and like, but I'm sorry, I just don't know a lot about that in the meddling of Iran, but okay. yeah, it seems the, very inappropriate. The last I think that people have to pull out what's negative that they feel like they're focusing on rather than focusing on the positive. And so they're trying to com create an environment of anger towards certain areas of the world. Uh, I believe that it's a, a political tactic, of course, is that um, you have to, as a politician, sometimes you vilify people or you make them the bad guy in some cases, and that's to kind of um, rally your troops, as, as they call it, um, get political support. I, I think U.S. is looking after its own interests in, the, in that regard. Um, uh, there are times when there has to be a proper uh, view of both sides and that is something that has been missing in a lot of cases. I mean I guess just because of all the all the violence that's going on over there and um, you know those countries um, there's a lot of like you know terroristic activity going on there so I think that's why. They're trying to hide whatever that they have going on over there whatever undercover operation or whatever that they're secretly working on um, I feel like that is why they're doing that, trying to shun him, um, what they're really doing over there, trying to hide it. This is quite uh, obvious. Pledging allegiance to Israel is an extreme non-ethical position. You practi practically support an ethnic cleanser, a state that is existing in complete breach of elementary human rights, and when you subscribe to a non-ethical agenda, you become blind, you stop thinking. I make a very clear distinction in my work between Athens, where you think things through, and Jerusalem, when you follow orders. America now is in its Jerusalemite phase. It follows Orders. At the moment it's Iran, before that it was the Arabs as a whole, uh, sometimes it's Hamas, sometimes it's Hezbollah, uh, sometimes it's this uh, ghost figure of Islamic uh, terrorism. So it, essentially it could be anybody because Israel's narrative is needs to have the cloud of existential threat hanging over its head and it needs to make that convincing and the way it can make it convincing is to create this uh, big enemy which threatens its very existence uh, so that it can continue with the status quo of taking as much of Palestinian land it can without the uh, indigenous population. That's always been the uh, end goal and it needs to keep that specter of uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the enemy outside its borders to continue its uh, ongoing ethnic cleansing. Why has America consistently ignored the Israeli regime's brutal policies against Palestinian citizens and repeatedly supported pro-Israeli policies and bills? The public said this. Um, I think that, you know, it's politics. People are going to go with what most of their country agrees with and um, they probably want to go with the main, uh, main feeling in Israel and I would say that's unfortunate that they do vote on policies that are so against Palestinian citizens sometimes. Um, but I would say that, it, again, it's because their values align with Israel. I think, I think it's all about, at that point, we don't want to get involved in something that isn't in our fight. 
because once you do, then you lose the the friendship of the Palestinian people. If we turn a blind eye to the whole thing, it's just not getting involved in something that might not be our business, so to speak. I mean, once you start incorporating that into our business, then we become a part of war, um, other negative influences, negative impacts, so that's probably why. Uh, I think that they're choosing their battles to ignore um, policies like that. I think there are some things that, you know, if it directly affects the American people, then they choose to become involved, but because it's not affecting the American people, they've chosen not to be involved in that. Um, I believe that they do that because of politics again, is that we're so closely related that sometimes you have to turn the blind eye and they don't, they say, I don't want to view this, but they have good, good benefits, but sometimes we don't want to see the disadvantages of certain things. Sometimes we kind of say, nope, I don't really want to see that. Uh, what I mean is um, it is in U.S. interest uh, to pander to the local population, the local vote bank to support the Jews. Uh, I'm not saying every single time that is the correct way of doing it. There has to be a proper uh, looking at the pros and cons and to see that the, the national justice is looked into, not just political gains and political mileage. Well, because aren't they like always fighting for territory still? Like, um, you know, they're still fighting for that territory that they lost against Israel, like back like in the 60s or whatever. So. I mean, it's constantly just battle going back and forth for, for land, is essentially what it is. America, sorry, to, to, yeah? Okay, I start, yeah? America is now the Sabbath goy, the Gentile that provides for the Jews on Sabbath. America is, in practice, a golem. A golem is an entity that was manufactured in Jewish tradition, obviously, uh, by the Jews to serve their interest. The golem doesn't think. The golem follows order, orders. And this is quite devastating for a country that used to see itself as the ruler of the world, as a superpower. America is in a devastating state, and it is tragic. In the UN, the US has vetoed resolutions in the Security Council 47 times in support of Israel. Uh, this clearly undermines US interests. It makes Israel look bad on the international stage. It prolongs the conflict. Uh, but having said that, um, it, 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 it still continues because, as I said, because of the lobby group. But, but when, when, when you have a prime president in, the, in America uh, who is on the way out and also there is a massive political cost, you can see, and like you did in 2016, U.S. presidents can, have, uh, can um, author a uh, resolution condemning Israel. Obama did that in 2016, for which he got a lot of criticism. He only did that because he was... Uh, there wasn't much political cost involved and uh, he understood the broader strategic goal and interest of, the, the, of America. When you have that situation, the US is able to do it, but generally it is under the influence of the lobby as we see in the continuous uh, vetoing of resolutions within the UN. And so we see that the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee continues to express its admiration for US President Donald Trump. In turn, the president continues to make overtly pro-Israeli policy statements, including his recognition of Jerusalem as the Israeli regime's capital. The relationship between AIPAC and the president seems active and influential. Meanwhile, those who worry about the plight of the oppressed Palestinian population have found it almost impossible to win any support from the president at all. Just as APAC is a case study in successful lobbying, so also this is a classic case of asymmetric influence, where Israel has almost all the votes on Capitol Hill and Palestine has almost none.